right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to our general project uh, orientation webinar here today, where we'll do a quick run through of our PowerPoint today and give you some basic knowledge. In the last about 10 minutes, we'll do Q&A. Um, and before that, we'll let our the ambassador presidents, Jed and Shalice Fair, answer some questions you may have for them as they have been participating in 4-H for many years now. Okay, let's get started. Um, so just an introduction, my name is Catherine. I'm one of your extension educators in Hennepin County. And I'm Amy Calera, uh, another extension educator in Hennepin. And then Jed, you want to give a quick shout out to yourself? My name is Jed Fair, and I am one of the co-presidents of the Fambassadors. And how many years have you been in 4-H? I'm pretty sure it's my fifth year in 4-H. Nice. Shalise? I'm Shalise Fair. I'm the other um, Fambassador president. Um, for some reason, math is hard right now, but I started 4-H in second grade. <laughs> And I'm in 11th grade now, so however many years that is. Awesome, Sorry. thank you. No, thank you, that's perfect. It gives a great range. All right, Amy? Cool, so our goals for this webinar series, this kind of came in light of us uh, moving remotely and having our um, 4-H programs in person canceled through the spring. Um, because typically, at least starting last year, we had an in-person FAIR project learning and orientation date. And so we wanted to keep this learning going. And in light of the many changes happening right now, um, we just wanted to bring you um, back to some awesome resources that we have to let you know that 4-H is still here for you to support your learning um, in whatever form that takes. And whether or not it takes you to a county fair or any kind of like formal exhibition state, we want to be there for you to... Um, in your learning. So we want to keep that hands-on project learning going, support you and welcome you in 4-H even through a distance way, and then get you excited and help you understand just the value of what it means to have a 4-H project from start to finish, because ideally we would, we would love to see you at the county fair as well as any state fair opportunities too. And we also know that 4-H is deep and wide and um, Catherine and I were not 4-H'ers ourselves, so it's been fun for us as staff to navigate um, this organization and this awesome program. So we're here to help address any questions you have and just be with you every step of the way. And then um, a couple things we just wanted to put on your radar right now to get you excited. We have things um, really rolling out this week. Um, First of all, it's our virtual arts review, and this is our performing arts demonstration, illustrated presentation and video um, judging event for projects. So if you're a singer, an instrument player, a dancer, um, have a school project that you're, you were looking forward to presenting, but now maybe that opportunity has changed. We have moved this event, which typically we host in person in April. We've put this onto a sweet application called Flipgrid, where it's kind of a self-recording um, platform that you can record or upload um, recorded videos of yourself and then also record um, like your judging experience. So this flyer, um, the Hennepin Arts Review flyer link here just walks you through all the steps needed. And ideally, we'd love these projects to, to be submitted by Friday, April 17th. However, um, we know that if this is the first time this is crossing your radar, we're absolutely willing to work with you. And um, if you need more time, we can help you through the weekend to get started in that. Another announcement that just came through today, which we're, um, I suppose, not surprised about at this point, but still disappointed. Um, our county fair in Hennepin County is the first in the state and it's usually Father's Day weekend June 19th through 21st and just due to the um, growing push to um, keep our social distancing in place through the summer um, our fair board and 4-H we've decided to postpone for the time being knowing that we can't necessarily responsibly commit to a date just yet we hope to have more information and be able to commit to something by May 15th and we're aiming for a late July to mid August weekend and this will be at a new location from typical um, 
from typical years, it's usually out in um, Hamill or Osseo Maple Grove area at the Corcoran Lions Park, but we'll have it in a brand new location this year. So knowing that we're pushed in time, um, we've been given all the gift of time and hopefully we can use it for good and be able to bring you into project learning. All right, so some of you may know what 4-H is and some of you may not. Just to give you a refresher, 4-H is a Learn by Doing um, nonprofit youth serving organization. It is a family oriented youth serving organization where you learn and grow with your child. It's an organization that wants youth to learn these soft skills such as communication, problem solving, leadership, self-confidence, um, and more like public speaking as well through hands-on learning. For an example, we can have kids learn all they can from a book, but what better is there a way to learn than to build their own rocket to experience and meet someone who is actually is a scientist and works in aviation or able to learn with other kids who express the same interests and passions. By being able to share that knowledge, they're, being, they're going to be able to communicate with each other, articulate themselves, and just be passionate and have fun with it too, because kids remember things way better when they have fun with it. All right, so 4-H project learning. What are 4-H general projects? Um, general is essentially meaning to anything that does not require an animal, not that any of our um, current livestock projects require an animal, um, but these are things like photo photography, arts and crafts, science, STEM, all these projects, which can, you can find in our premium book. Um, it's a full A through Z list. Um, and you can pretty much make a project out of almost anything a child wants to learn about. I think last year we had one of our kids do a demonstration on how to use a Ken, what's it called? Kenba? Kenda. Kenba. 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 Kentama. It's where you use a, a stick and you have to catch the ball on one side and catch on the other side. That is also called self-determined. So if you find that your child's hobby or passion does not fit in one of these categories, don't worry. We have something called self-determined and they can enter it in there too. All right. Uh, some of the general overview general uh, categories of our 4-H general projects are just agronomy, citizenship and leadership, environment and earth science, and so on. And within these um, categories, you'll find more specific project areas. So in expressive arts and communication, something more specific would be performing arts and uh, illustrated presentations. And what else is there, Amy, in that category? A video. Yeah, video, even yeah. photography falls mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then healthy living, it could be anything from, uh, what's it called? Healthy living also includes food nutrition, canning also includes uh, like health and safety, health and safety, babysitting, how to live alone, those different uh, project areas. And outdoor adventures can be anything from learning about trees, can be learning about the animal life, can learn about your favorite animal and making up trifold about it. And science, technology, engineering, math, of course, STEM, so any science experiments that you want to try out, make a trifold about it. And just to, just talk about it and let people know what you learned, what your results are, and how you could change it again if you were to do it again. All right, general project resources. So our Minnesota 4-H website has more and more ideas on how you can get started, more details on what area, what project areas are available for kids and yourself as parents and guardians to look through. And also in our premium book as well. In section five, it looks like I can click on it and show you here. The general five, uh, section five general 4 H project in our premium book um, is one of the many other resources that gives you a really quick view of Hennepin County, what we can um, just simplify from the Minnesota 4-H website. And it's a long list of just different project areas. It even has quilting, safety, small engines, a vegetable garden box, some reason, even potatoes has its own project area, and even corn. Corn has its own project areas too. <laughs> All right, Amy? 
Sure. Um, so the next couple of slides we wanted to show you and tell you just some stories about 4-Hers that we've been able to work with and support in um, the last two years. And um, I guess, yeah, the 4-Youth, um, these stories are just ordered by, um, by grade level. Um, so hopefully you can get an idea of what you can do through all your years in 4-H. Um, and Shilis and Jed, I have you, um, if you wouldn't mind helping us at the end of these four slides, we can make four to six if you two would mind talking as well. Um, so first of all, Kanani, um, last year through our fair season, she was in third grade. And last year at the county fair, she brought her laptop with a um, project that she had made at school all about pandas and she loves pandas so much and an illustrated presentation is really a public speaking project area where, where you get to educate your judge or educate an audience about a subject you're passionate about and really love. So this was her opportunity to pick maybe her favorite animal and tell this judge here sitting in the yellow, um, his name's Pete, all about pandas. And Angela, um, she was in fourth grade last year. She submitted many projects. Um, however, one of them that got a purple ribbon, which actually is our highest um, highest ranking of ribbons and awards at our county fair um, on an entomology pro project. So you can see that she made a trifold poster um, describing all about like butterfly life cycles, the story of a butterfly and how you can, and it looks like even on her um, trifle there, she talks about their migration patterns, how to make your own like caterpillar friendly garden, how to have like monarch pollinator friendly gardens. So she was really passionate about sharing that, um, all that she had learned there with that judge. And then this is Theo. He's actually our Kendama um, exhibitor, too, from <laughs> Catherine's story earlier. He is, or was a seventh grader last year, now eighth grader. He had a trip up north, I believe, last spring and took some photos um, on a new camera and was able to um, just kind of sift through all of them and um, bring two of these photos to the county fair. So these were some of his photos in photography projects. And what's cool about the photography project here in 4-H is that there are um, some subclasses within that. So maybe you're really interested in like photo manip manipulation or just really the elements of photography. So like landscape photos like these that may not have necessarily gone through much manipulation or filters. Um, these were likely just an elements of photography. So the judge and Theo himself were likely looking at how to frame them, how to um, you know, just really the the scope and and um, like framing of it all of what makes a good photo. And just to let you all know too that we the project does not discriminate on what you're using, whether it's like an actual legitimate camera from a photography store or you're using your phone. As long as you get the angle, you what you learn from it, how you manipulate it, or just the whole experience is what's important um, than just the result. Correct. Thanks, Catherine. Mm -hmm. And then this is William. He actually has already exited our program. He's aged out. He's um, one year past or now two years past high school because he was a senior in um, 2018, he actually was able to fix up his grandfather's old car. Um, and this was a really important project to him. He spent all um, like winter and spring working on it and was able to take it to the county fair. And in speaking with him about this project, he was really excited. Not only had he learned about like old car engines, about upholstering and like finishing those like exterior surfaces and tires and just all the like um, top to bottom um, pieces of like car maintenance, um, but he also had learned so much about it. So what was interesting is that he and I had a really good conversation of, about what type of um, project he should enter this as at the county fair level and we decided it would likely be a self-determined and we can talk about this project more as we dive into the premium book later in this chat but again what Catherine was saying is self-determined is really a um, a project area that emphasizes the learning of what you did that maybe maybe it wasn't an an engine 
maybe it wasn't just an engine project. So William was really adamant about making sure his like full capacity of learning was was recognized in his judging experience and in this project as well. All right, Jed and Shalise, uh, go ahead and unmute yourself. There are a couple questions that we have here. You can answer one, two, or three of them. You do not have to answer all of them. And then after this, I believe um, we have one or two more slides and then we'll open up to Q&A. Okay, well, I can start then. Mm -hmm. I've done, um, so, sewing, fine arts, tanning. Is she in the project? I don't know what category. Um, I did a demonstration one year. Uh, yeah, there's, I've done a lot of things. I've been in it for a while. Um, my favorite project area was gardening. I, cause I grew a flower garden and I was, I really liked that one. Um, can't see the bottom questions. Maybe do one of the last two. Cause I think those have oh. been, or I guess you said gardening. Maybe do the last one. How has your approach to project learning changed as you've gotten older? Oh, okay. Um, I guess as I've gotten, me specifically as I've gotten older, I kind of go about project learning, you know, from the standpoint of what can I learn that would both benefit me in the future since I'm almost an adult and I'm going to have to be on my own soon and I'm going <laughs> to need some <laughs> skills, but also from a standpoint of what could I, what project could I do that would help others? For example, my flower gardening one, I think is my most recent project. Sometimes I get mixed up what years things were, but when I grew flowers, I learned about all that flowers to like senior citizens from my church, which I mean, I love doing things to help people. So that's always fun too when you can like do some community service with your projects too. Cool. Shelly, so you just described the whole experiential learning model of going from like do reply do reflect and apply like getting it all the way to the all around to the circle of serving others with your awesome projects nice job Jed? okay so some of the 4-h projects i've done are i did a home improvement project or home environment i did a shop project I did a computer science project and the most recent project I did was, or not the most recent, I did a computer science vid project or mm -hmm. photography. Yeah. Um, one thing that's kind of changed as I've gotten older, I've been using the 4-H curriculum more because online they have the, at the 4-H mall that you can buy the 4-H curriculums for all of the different types of projects. Like the most recent one I did was photography and I read through all the curriculums and that was really helpful. I got a lot of new knowledge from that. And that even helped me make my project because I did it on some ways to make your photos look better. And I got some of those tips from the curriculum. It's really helpful. Thank you, Jed. Thanks, Jed. I didn't know you used the curriculum books. That's new. <laughs> yeah, awesome. they're really helpful. All right. How and where do you do 4-H project learning? So project learning can be anywhere for within your 4-H club. If you have joined a 4-H club to just doing it at home from a trip when you went on vacation, you went to go see your family in Arkansas uh, with your community of faith, whether you go to temple or to church or a mosque, or you actually did the project at school and you thought, this is so awesome. I wanna share my project with everyone at the county fair. You, even if your project came from another program that you did, maybe you did it at a different art program prior to joining 4-H, that's totally fine. Or maybe you wanna take that and redo it and make it even better because it's been a year or two. Basically, Anytime you did a project, you are more than welcome to share that at the county fair. And some additional resources. Um, you can read the rest of the premium book, Henman County 4-H premium book there with the link 4-H family, 
Is there a Z link for this, Amy, or is this a link? Uh, not on this slide, but there okay. is another. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, there's a 4-H curricula folder and hot cheese that are from Iowa 4-H. We borrow some resources from other states because they're so awesome. And instead of reinventing the wheel, we'll just ask if we could use this as well. And we usually get it okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we always have shop4h.org, which is the 4-H mall that Jed was just talking about. And you can always ask your 4-H staff, club leaders, um, and other 4-H youth members for ideas as well. Usually at our office, we have a bunch of free curriculum that we would love to give to you that we do not want back. Um, currently right now is a little difficult just because we're not at our offices, but in the future, if you need a curriculum book, please let us know. Mm -hmm. um, just, Catherine, do you mind going back to the hot sheets? Yeah. Do you mind, could you click on that link? I just know I'm glad to hear Elizabeth and Edie are saying uh, Iowa hot sheets are some of the most helpful resources. Um, All right, let's look at woodworking. So these are the Iowa hot sheets and it starts out with here's what you can do in a year or all year, I guess. It starts out with basic level one, identifying tools and needs for your work area. And then if you're advanced, you can go to intermediate level two, where you can start determining which woods are good for a product. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Or learn the importance of proper sanding and finish application. And step three is super advanced, is using a stain to emphasize the grain of the wood or explore woodworking careers and entrepreneurial opportunities. Um, and with woodworking, it also inter intersects so many other type of project areas such as communication, citizenship, and leadership um, from woodworking can bear citizenship in ways of building a bird feeder for a neighbor or conducting a basic building workshop for a younger club or younger age group and developing an exhibit comparing different wood finishes. <laughs> um, so project areas, they intersect with each other all the time is just you as a as the individual understanding where do I want to best have this entered in a project area that really disp displays my learning and my um, my experience thank you mm -hmm. all right want to take us home Amy Sure, I would love to. So ultimately, our 4-H project goal, um, your four main steps are to select a topic and project you care about, and don't let that necessarily be singular. You're, we see 4-H youth bringing um, two to 20 projects, doing two to 20 projects each year, sometimes more, so you don't necessarily have to limit yourself in number. Um, and then just enjoy the ride, set your goals, follow those curriculum, find all those resources, um, make mistakes, make changes, evolve it. Um, and then if you're really serious about putting, having an exhibition or a judging um, experience at the county fair or hopefully um, later this summer, that you think about how you want to share your project and how you want to display it. So when we see, say, trifold posters or um, maybe a book or a binder, just think about how you can best display something. And then again, just sharing it, um, your expertise with us and beyond. So hopefully we'll have more details in the next month regarding um, our Hennepin County Fair next month. And no, if you want to go to the next slide, know that um, help is always near from us, um, your peers. Hopefully you're connected to a 4-H club. If you're not, we're happy to help you get there. Many of our clubs are still meeting virtually while social distancing is in place. Our 4-H club leaders are here for you and Catherine and I, as well as other 4-H staff. Man, there is um, resources galore out there that we would love to connect you with. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, at this point, we are happy to field your questions and otherwise um, happy to feel free to unmute or turn on your video. We can just have a conversation from here. And we can also kind of take you through a tour of the premium book too, if, um, if time or your interests allow. And the chat box is open too, if you'd rather type. Oh, there's something in the chat. Thanks, Jenny. <laughs> we do, um, I think Amy has shared it out before too, is that we have a folder full of different curriculum books, uh, 
already, or not curriculum books, uh, hot sheets, including other lesson plans and just things you can do at home with your kids to test things out and how you can make a project out of it. We have a folder full of it, or at least I've been updating and stuffing it for as long as I can. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No questions. Wow, we must have, uh, we answered them all maybe? Oh, I have a question, but maybe it's Please. for next week. That's okay. Um, so are you going to kind of do a similar format next week? With the animal science and livestock projects? Yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, we'll go all through that. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. And no, too, yeah, uh, regardless of your, like, preferred project area, you are welcome to dip your toes in, yeah. in all of it. So, um, you can do, like, five regular projects, general projects, and then two animal projects if you wanted to. <laughs> Limitless. However many they want to do. Mm-hmm. Ooh, um, so Edie asks, how does 4-H help in the future, like after high school? Oh, beautiful. We don't necessarily have high school grads just yet, and I mean, aside from... <laughs> oh, Jed has an answer. In the room, but I have an Jed answer, too. Yeah. I know it's probably the same answer, but it's very true. It, public speaking is, like, probably the main way, mm-hmm. or one of the ways, It's but it's probably the biggest one. 4-H helped me so much with my public speaking, just talking to a judge. It's like your first couple time, it's, it might be a little nervous, but once you do it like a couple of times, it's really easy. And it helps with your whole public speaking. Like I don't get nervous for like school presentations anymore, things like that. Public speaking is one of the big ways that 4-H can help cool. in the well, future. That's a big deal. Mm-hmm. Should we yeah. say the same answer or different? I mean, that that's one of the things. When I started 4-H, I did a, I've done a demonstration, at least for my club, pretty much every year. And my first year, I was so quiet, no one could hear me. And now I can just kind of get up in front of a group without worrying about it. And that's a really nice skill to have. Um, but also, commu- like, community service and all of the different things that you do in 4-H are really helpful for scholarship applications and college applications, and just, like, all sorts of things. If you have the sex and service things that you've done, it's going to be helpful in the future. Um, I would also like to add, too, like... And also learning how to learn, like, on your own without a t-shirt. Mm, yes, that's correct. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, I think that's a big deal, too, of just, especially now in this kind of new world we're in of just being so self-guided and needing that kind of like intrinsic like internal wheel to keep you going yeah that motivation I think that's one thing 4-H has continued to help our young people with also helps with the jobs too like my niece she's 17 now and she was a 4-H camp counselor for a couple of years now in different uh, day camps in Bay Lake she got a job because she mentioned oh yes I was a camp counselor at 4-H let me tell you more <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah I'll tell you as an adult I was I was in 4-H from the time I was seven until I was 19 awesome and awesome. I lived in very rural north northern minnesota but uh it was very helpful into getting the, into college i mean I, obviously awesome. all the in 4-h you know i did pretty much every part of, but even now as an adult mm-hmm. i'm the only person in my neighborhood that knows how to can food mm-hmm. or wow. do woodworking mm-hmm. or fi- i mean fi- i mean all those life skills that my neighbors have to pay somebody to do mm-hmm I can do because I already learned it or you know we have a pretty elaborate garden even though we live in the city and people are like how do you know this thing <laughs> it's because I was in 4-H that's, that's awesome, how I Jeff. learned it mm-hmm. which by the way if you ever want to do a quick 30 minute walkthrough of how to can things like a little project workshop video let us know yeah Ooh. right mm-hmm. <laughs> they literally can they- all our own vegetables and make mm-hmm. jam every year and all oh, that jam. Stuff. Mm-hmm. they literally enrolled last month so <laughs> We'll oh my god! Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> never mind. Have some breathing room. Sorry, <laughs> but yeah. still, sounds well, like it helped me get into college, and I got mm-hmm. many, many scholarships. And even now, you know, 
as a mature adult, he, you know, people are very respectful and very complimentary of people that have went through 4-H. So awesome. it, awesome. it follows you your whole life. Yeah. Thanks, John. All right. Uh, right now it is 732. If there are any last questions or comments, please speak now. Otherwise, meeting can be adjourned and let you off to have a lovely, wonderful rest of your night.